Thank you for tuning in to KNS Society Talk Live. We are on our third episode of the season, and I'd like to go ahead and thank our supporters at this time, uh, Homesdale Cinema and Homesdale PA, new screens, comfortable seatings, cheap prices, and all the new movies for your entertainment viewing needs. Visit Honesdale Cinemas if you're in the Honesdale PA area at the Route 6 Plaza in Honesdale. Also, I'd like to thank Ultra Toxic Television. Ultra, to- te- Ultra Toxic Television, it's not just art, uh, it's exploitation. It can be viewed on Roku streaming devices, and you can visit myvidportal.com. That's myvidportal.com. It's vile. It's disturbing. It's offensive. It's Ultra Toxic Television. Now banned in over 10 countries. Ultra Toxic Television, only on Roku. Get it at myvidportal.com. That's myvidportal.com. Ultra Toxic Television. It's not art, it's exploitation. in the woods with, with four bedrooms, a pond, and nobody else for miles around. Name a horror film. Any horror film. This place is great. Where's the bedrooms? Why don't I take a nice stroll down that dirt path into the woods late tonight all by myself? Ooh, I think I stepped on something. Then afterwards I can go skinny dipping in the pond. I didn't see anything. It was probably nothing. There is something out there. Don't forget, I have rented out every single horror film on videotape. It's driving me crazy. There's no need. Out here, those things that pop out of your stomach when you least expect it. Yes, I think you've seen some of these too. There's no need to fear. There's nothing out there. That's where the rest of the chicken was. I don't know what that is. I think there's nothing out there. Did you hear something? Oh, I know I heard something. Because now it's in here. Who's in the other room melting right now? This can't be happening. You don't know anything about that creature except it, like everyone else, takes a mouthful of shaving cream. Ah! This can't be so. Come on! It's uh, your quick. Nice bikini. This stuff only happens in movies. So you're saying we're in a movie? Uh oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. This thing hasn't missed a trick. Controls mind, deep people, reproduces. This thing's gonna have itself an orgy. It's a fight to the death with a slimy mutation. And that's how I spent my summer vacation. You see the creature? Give him my best. There's nothing out there. Well, this is a fun vacation, Nick. Too bad we have to go home now. From 20-year-old filmmaker Ralph Konefsky.
Thanks for tuning in to KNS Society Talk Live. Um, I am joined by my co-host, Lucian Toombs. And uh, that trailer from Nuts, There's Nothing Out There from Ralph Koneski, uh, he'll be joining us live on the air on um, February 6th. So you can tune in and listen to that great filmmaker talk about all the upcoming films and all the projects that he has done. Um, how are you doing today, Lucian? Oh, much, much better, thank you. Yeah, you're feeling better. I know last last week you had a nasty cold, and we missed you. Oh, last week, last week I sounded like an asthmatic swamp monster. <laughs> <laughs> Dreadful shit. Yeah, and um, we had a great show last week. Buddy Colt was on here. We had some good um, memories talking about the old school wrestling. Um, this week we Peter Alden might be able to join us because of some uh, the uh, personal ish, um, audios that he's. Uh, going through and that, and that he has to take care of, um, but he'll be joining us next week. Um, and tonight we're going to be talking about Australian cinema, Lucian. Um, do you know much about Australian cinema? Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the text that I sent, I know a tiny bit, uh, getting back to the horror films, uh, I remember seeing an Australian film called Razorback on HBO eons ago. That was a really good movie. Oh. Razorback was an awesome, awesome film. It was one of my favorites about the giant boar. Um, and it was done really well, I think. Um, I remember it coming on the HBO. Um, and back then, we also had a channel called Spotlight in the 80s. Um, and it was on yeah, that. Really. And I, I watched that film. It became one of my favorites. Um, and I do recommend you seeing it. Uh, it was, uh, what was I think it was uh, was it a 1982 film, Lucian? 1981. It was some. Yeah, uh, it was around the early 80s. It came out. That sounds yeah, about right. Uh, oh, it was. There was a night. I remember it was 1984 film, and uh, it was. Uh, I have it here, written by Everett De Roche, and it was based on Peter Brennan's novel. It was directed by Russell Mulcahy. Mok- um, I think Listen I said Hayden. that right. I'm not sure. Yep. And it's uh, but it was but about was about a giant razorback boar that was in the outback. Um, it was uh, maybe it wasn't. I don't want to say low budget because it looked like they put a lot into the film. Um, it was really well done. Greg, Gregory Harrison, Aki Whitley, Bill Kerr, Chris Haywood played in it. Um, and it was some good acting in that film. And we're going to be talking about not just about horror today in Australian cinema. We'll be talking about um, how uh, Australian cinema was highly effective in the cinema we had today. They brought us great films like Mad Max, um, The Road Warriors. Um, they brought us but, um, other films like Crocodile Dundee back in the 80s, which was a very fun film to watch. Um, but before we oh, move yeah. on, I want to go ahead and I want to talk about um, – we had uh, we were scheduled to have a great actor, Australian actor, on the air with us today. But um, being within, see, yesterday was Wednesday in Australia. Today's Wednesday in in the states, and uh, also the call in, the technical issues. It was really um, hard to to get compromised and to do. Um, but Sean Anthony Robinson was going to be joining us today, um, and he's a great actor. And um, he did a lot of good films. He's up and coming. And he's a really gifted and talented um, actor in the Australian film world. And he's done films like That's Not a Knife, which is uh, being heavily promoted. And that's coming out in 2019. He also did Deadly Woman, uh, Blue Murder, Killer Cop, Parade. Um, and he has a good, pretty good resume, pretty good from from a graph, graphy on his uh, um, IMDb. So if you want to check it out, his name is uh, Sean A. Robinson. And he was, like I said, he was going to join us, but has a te- technical difficulties in being also from Australia. And um, we calling in from the States, uh, we couldn't get on the same time frame there. But and also a technical issues about calling in and such. I mean, it was a complicated procedure. We tried last night to get it fixed, but we couldn't. And that, but um, he is a great actor, and I'm hoping to see him in some American films. Um, like I say, any uh, directors out there, look him up. Uh, Sean Anthony Robinson, um, great talent. He has a film reel out there. You can watch that. 
and you can see that he is a really good up-and-coming actor, a lot of good films in his resume, and you'll be really pleased. Uh, but to go back on a topic of Australian uh, films and cinema in Australia, um, it has to go back to like 1906 with the production of A Story of the Kelly Gang. Um, it's a, uh, well, 1906, I mean, that goes uh, way, way back. Um, and that was a silent film and such, but it was uh, a film that um, went on, it, it gained notoriety as the, being the um, a silent film, not the best film, but it was uh, a really interesting film. If you want to take a look at it, you can look it up online, the story of, Ke- of the Kelly gang. And that goes up to uh, 1906 when that production began. Um, but we have other films that came about in the Australian time period between the 1940s and 50s, uh, 40,000 Horsemen, uh, um, Kokoda Frontline, Jetta, Conquest of the Rivers, Hod to the Windward, Edge of the Deep, and The Power Makers. All of them went on to become AFI winners for Best Film and also um, some other nominees as well. Um, and they came from the 1940s into the 1959 time periods. Um, any of those films ring a bell, Lucian? Uh, getting back to Ned Kelly, actually, there was a movie made, I want to say, in the late 60s, early 70s with Mick Jagger uh, about Ned Kelly. Uh, I don't know if that was an Australian production or not. Yeah, for Robert. Um, uh, yeah, for Rob, for Robert Ned Kelly was was actually actually pretty smart. He created a sort of a suit of armor out of some stove plate, which he wore, which rendered him uh, semi bulletproof. And, uh, but I mean, the, a lot of the films. If you look at the history of Australian films and Australian cinema. A lot of films went on to win AFI winners for best films. Um, some went on to win um, actors and so forth. But mostly uh, all of them I went through um, had uh, an award of some sort, in which it shows that Australia really knew how to hit the angle. And I never saw an Australian film that I was disappointed in. They always had a great eye for cinematography. Um Oh yeah, they always had a, a good um, realism to the tone of this uh, of their films. Um, there was uh, one of my favorites that that strikes out with uh, Wolf Creek, which that came out. Um, and you, you remember that film, Wolf Creek? Um, oh yeah, Lucian. Yeah, that based was on a one true of my story. Favorites. Yes, yes, it was based on a true story about a serial killer, and that came out in two thousand five. And that went on to get seven AFI nominations, including Best Director. Um, and also John Jarrett was up and Nathan Phillips was up. And John Jarrett is an awesome, awesome Australian actor. Um, I, I loved his work. It went on to span a sequel with Wolf Creek 2 and also had a, a series, which was uh, had two seasons so far. Have you ever caught on with the series yet, the TV series? Um, series? I've heard of it. I haven't had a chance to catch any of it. I'm, I'm guessing that'd probably be on Netflix if it's uh, here in the States. Yeah, it was... Um, um, I don't think you can see it on Netflix. I didn't have any um, luck on Netflix watching it. I did see some of it on... It was Hulu. Um, also, Amazon had the first season, I believe. Amazon Prime had the first season. You can watch it. Um, another Amazon film that I love. Oh, what was that, Lucian? I said Amazon has everything. Oh, they do. They do. Um, another film I really enjoyed watching. Um, have you seen Road Games with Stacey Keach and Jamie Lee Curtis? Oh, I want to say yes, but it's been a long time. That was uh, one it was like what I loved about that film was if you go back to Alfred Hitchcock the way he did his filming and go back to the film Rear Window it was all shot from an apartment building with uh, yeah. the uh, James Stewart's um, point of view to the window and such now if you take um, Road Games you go ahead 
it's the same principle, but it's done through a truck driver's point of view inside of his truck. Um, he sees uh, what he believes is a murder taking place. Um, no one believes him. He tracks him down. He keeps seeing um, other things that rises up his suspicions. Um, come to find out there was a serial killer picking up hitchhikers and killing them. And uh, he meets up with Jamie Lee Curtis, and they go and try to, on their little uh, road travels, to investigate what's going on. And it all ends up into uh, she falls prey to the serial killer, and um, he has to try to get him. I mean, it was really good acting. It was a really good film. And I would um, de- definitely recommend seeing that film if you haven't seen it yet. And that was Bold Games. Well, yeah, two great actors there. Yes. And um, you go into, like, when you go into, like, the 70s of Australian cinema, you bring in films like uh, Homesdale, Stork, Wake and Fright, uh, The Cars That Ate Paris, uh, Sunday Too Far Away, uh, The Devil's Playground, 1976. And, I mean, then it comes up to 1979 when we're brought to Mad Max. And Mad Max introduced Mel Gibson to an international audience. Um, it was it held a world record as the highest profit to cost a radio of a motion picture at that time. Um, and it went on to spawn Road um, Roadway of Mad Max 2, uh, Beyond the Thunderdome, Mad Max 3, and also went on to get the, uh, I don't want to call it a reboot, it was uh, Tom Hardy's Mad Max, and when that came out pretty recently. Um, so Mad Max has a great following, and if you have not seen that movie, I recommend it. It was in 1979. It was directed by George Miller, um, and like I said, it starred uh, Mel Gibson, has Mad Max in it, and there was so much action, and it was for that time period of 1979, it did bring a lot of great aspects to cinema when it comes to action, um, and I highly recommend that as being one of the great Australian films that came out in that period. Oh, yeah. Getting back to your remarks earlier about cinematography, uh, they definitely utilize just broad stretches of the Australian landscape to give you the sense of desolation, uh, you know, as to what happened in the movie, what happened, to, you know, in the story, a story of the movie. I mean, some truly some stunning stuff that they managed that they managed to shoot. And- what I want to do right now is I want to take a, just a small break, and I want to go ahead and I'm going to play this uh, quick trailer to Mad Max. And like I said, you guys listening, you haven't seen it yet, which I'm sure many of you have. Uh, this is Mel Gibson's Mad Max. Somewhere on the abandoned highways of tomorrow, where law is another word for vengeance. I'm going to blow him away. Justice is a forgotten memory. And order lies shattered in the ruins of civilization. I am a rocker! I am Somewhere up ahead, a hero is waiting. Max. The crack interceptor for the main force patrol. torque pursuit of speed crazed bandits. The bronze. Kill our pride. I'm scared, thief. <laughs> I'm beginning to enjoy it. Down the top shelf. You're a winner, Max. Crazy about you. We know who you are. <laughs> Broke 
and his wife. They've killed his best friend. People don't believe in heroes anymore. They've pushed him too far. We're gonna give them back their heroes. Mad Max. The last law in a world gone out of control. I guess that was Mad Max. Um, it was a great film. And those of you who have not seen it, I highly recommend you watch it. Cause it did, uh, back in the 70s, it did break the mold in Australian filming. Um, now, um, going back to talk about Australian film, did you know that the first public screening of films in Australia were in October of, ni- of 1896? Um, and it was within a year of the world's first screen in Paris by the Lemaire brothers. And um, it was to go back with uh, a lot of the, the films in Australia going dating back to like within the 1906 period with the story of the Kelly Gang gang. A number of which of those um, the people involved in the films and such, they received international recognition. Um, many actors and filmmakers started their careers in Australia and then moved on to other bigger projects um, in other parts of the world as well. Um, international reputations, um, and they came in, play, in places with films such as the United States and, and other areas of the world. So Australia played a large part in cinema and brought us a lot of great, great films and a lot of great directors and a lot of people that had great aspects of films as well. And what, um, I'm sorry, we have a person in the chat room and they asked, Lucian and, uh, Keith, what are your thoughts of the Australian film The Man from Snowy River? Um, now, that film was a 1982 Australian drama. You remember that one, don't you, Lucian, The Man from Snowy River? Oh, uh, yeah. Kirk Douglas? And, I mean, you, you, you might have a um, – I saw it maybe uh, back in the day, but I don't really have much recognition of it. Um, maybe you could take this one on, Lucian, and tell us about it. Um, well, I'm, I'm just sort of winging it here because I remember seeing, remember seeing part of it back in the day when VHS ruled the earth. Uh, you know, great story. Uh, again, uh, getting back to cinematography, lots of beautiful shots of the Australian, of the Australian countryside and the outback. Um, I'm kind of stuck for the names of the actors right now, but uh, I know Kirk, Kirk Douglas was in it. He played in a dual role, um, and I know he played in it. Um, and as you had Jack, uh, Jack Thompson, who was in it, he played the character of Clancy. So you did have a lot of good actors in the film. It was a 20th Century Fox release. Yeah, I remember it being but, more of a um, family kind of film. Yes, yeah, that, that's, that's how I took it too. It was more of a family setting film, um, really well done for the time period. Um, it uh, was highly acclaimed. It was a highly acclaimed the release, and um, it just it went on to become a really high regarded film um, for the time period. Um, and since we have brought into the '80s, um, we mentioned the Man from Snowy River. The '80s also brought us a lot of other great Australian films as well. Um, one of them. Um, I remember see, I got a lot of video store and I watched it and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and I don't know if you saw this one. It starred Sam Neill, Nicole Kidman, and Billy Zane. It was a 1989 Australian psychological thriller called Dead Calm. Have yeah, I've heard of it. Sure. Yeah, I've heard yeah, of Dead that. Calm, yeah. Dead Calm was, uh, it's included in New York top 1000 movie list a really great psychological thriller had little aspects once again of a little Hitchcock uh, elements there Um, really good storytelling and all the actors played great roles Um, it wasn't if you haven't seen that one just check it out I recommend that one and that was really good as well Um, also in the 80s we got our sequel to Mad Max which was The Road Warrior Um, and that there went on to win AFI winner for Best Direction Costume design, editing, production design, and sound. Away with a lot of good um, awards in 1981. 
Um, then you had Running on Empty. That was a 19, another 1982 classic. It was an action film um, that was shot around Sydney in North, New South Wales in Australia. Um, have you heard about that film, Lucian, Running on Empty? Uh, it was also, it have, also but... went to also went by the name Fastlane Fever, an alternate name, 1982. It was it was a fun film. Um, it's really hard to find, really obscure. Um, I recommend looking it up and um, seeing if you find a copy. And if you do, just watch it. It was a really good film. Um, but it also, if you go to 1986, that's when we were introduced to a character, Mick Dundee, in an Australian comedy in 1986 called Crocodile Dundee. Um, and I know you had to see that one with Paul Hogan. Oh. And that went on to oh, I that went on to get um one I think it was it was a one or two sequels. Plus you have uh, another one coming out, a new one coming out. Um I don't know if it's a remake or just a takeoff of the Crocodile Dundee series, but that's coming out. But Crocodile Dundee in nineteen eighty six, I want to tell you very quickly about my memory of that one. Um being in the video store era being raised in it, nineteen eighty four was the, the thought of the big boom of the video store era. When this film came out, I remember the big the standees and the big posters. And back then, we didn't have like our blockbusters and Hollywood videos where you can get multiple copies. You had like one, two, maybe four of a copy. And I remember lines going out the door waiting to get their hands on this film, waiting for one customer to bring it back and grab that and so forth. Crocodile Dundee did really well when it came to um, home video, but it also did extremely well when it came to the theaters. It received international oh, acclaim. Good. It was nominated for an Oscar for Best Screenplay. And what do you take on the Crocodile Dundee series? I saw Crocodile Dundee in the theaters on the big screen. And uh, uh, Paul Hogan, I believe he wrote the script, if memory serves me correct. And... Uh, he he definitely hit the hit it out of the park on that one in that the movie is very Australian centric you might say but then again it was written in such a way that the humor was almost universal I mean you could under you know you could understand and really get a good laugh out of it whether you're in the states Australia or somewhere in Central Europe you know it just worked really that well and a very funny movie. And it was actually inspired by the true life exploits of Rod Ansel. Um and it so had a little uh, there's a little trivia there. Um and it went on to it was at a budget of under ten million dollars. And it was as a as it went on to, to make the as it went on as the film progressed, you figure ten million dollars was the budget. It went on to gross three hundred and twenty eight million dollars. That film did, and it that went on to, good. and there was two sequels. There was Crocodile Dundee Two that came out in 1988, and a follow-up to Crocodile Dundee in Los Angeles in 2001. Uh, but both of the sequels seemed to fail in the the success of the original Crocodile Dundee, and it was also starred Linda. Um, Kozlowski, who became who went on to be Hogan's future wife, and she was a great actress as well. So um, I remember watching Crocodile in India. Has a lot of fond memories back in the '80s of seeing that. Um, and then you had a film that came out. It won for best film, and it starred Colin Friels. It was called Malcolm in 1986. It was a comedy. Um, it was actually written by a husband and wife team, David Parker and Nadia Tass. Um, and it was directed by Nidia Tass. But um, have you ever heard of that film, Malcolm? Yes, I have. Uh, it's I, again, I'm draw, I'm drawing a blank on the, the cast or whatever. But yeah, I've heard of it. See, um, it, it, I, I did a I, I did a lot of homework when it came to the the show. Like I say, it was totally threw me off the. Uh, the point of last minute, because like I said, we were expecting to have Sean Anthony Robinson. The show was to be based around his career in Australia as being an actor. But um, I went, we went ahead and um, I said, well, I'm going to keep the theme of Australian films. And we went on with uh, Australian cinema. 
So, um, like I say, it's I understand why you're drawing a blank in that because, like I said, this was thrown last minute when I messaged you and I said, hey, Lucian, we're going to do the the show's going to be on Australian cinema. And I think that was like maybe an hour and a half ago when I messaged you all that. So you really didn't have that much time to prepare. But um, to get back on the subject, in 1988, an uh, Australian drama came out um, called Evil Angels. And that was another great film. Um, it's not Meryl Streep. And have you ever heard of that film? No, I can't say that I have. Yep, Meryl Streep and Sam Neill starred in it. And um, the film was had a great, great release. And um, it didn't really uh, break the – it had a budget of $15 million and it only drew in $6.9 million in the United States. But the thing is, is that the film did um, gain a good cult following. And it, it was uh, it was more like shot like a, as a docudrama. So it was kind of like in a different element when people will go watch a film and such and they'll see. But it did win AFA winner of Best Film and Meryl Street Best Actress nominee. So um, there was a couple of good things that came from the film, but it did gain a good cult following. And um, it actually it, was – if you, if you, if you can – like to, 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 to clarify this, it comes by A Cry in the Dark. Is the oh, okay. Now show. that's the that's the title I know it by then. Yes. Yep. Was that the was and, that the, uh, was that the one where where dingoes ate her baby? That one there, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's, about, the one yeah, was, that's the one where the United the, the United States was known. The name was known as a cry in the dark, but the alternate name was called Evil Angels. Um, like I say, it had a has a huge following, and it's a really good film, Meryl Street and Sam Neill. Uh, they did a great job acting in the film, and um, I recommend watching it. Um, I know a lot of you out there listening probably did see it or probably did not see it, but it's, it should be on one of your lists to, to watch in the past. So, um, and also we had, uh, in 1982, we had Lonely Hearts that came out, and that's an Australian film, but it was directed by Paul Cox. And it went on to win AFI, AFI Award for Best Film and nominated for other categories. Um, that film there stars Wendy Hughes and Norman Kay. Um, it also, the budget on that was really low, uh, $690,000. And wow. that also went on to form, to, to go ahead and form a, um, a good cult following as well when it was released on home video and such. And I don't know if you ever saw that film, Lucia, Lonely Hearts. Hey, the title rings the, the title rings a bell, but I can't say that I've seen it. It's just mm-hmm. something about the market around here. Unless unless you were lucky enough to work at a video store, uh, the Australian films sort of came and went really fast. You know, if, if you got them at all. I mean, Crocodile Dundee played for the longest time here in Louisville, but. Uh, Oh gosh, uh, there were there were you know films like some of the ones you just mentioned. Uh, they either were here very briefly or not at all. Yes, and I and that's a good point to bring up, Lucian, because um, like a Cry in the Dark didn't have the success rate in the theaters when it was released here in the states, but it had a phenomenal success rate when it hit the home video market. Um, now, here's some fun trivia. In 1982, an Australian film came out called BMX Bandits. Um, it was directed by Brian Trenchard Smith, and it starred a young Nicole Kidman and Brian Marshall. Um, Nicole Kidman went on to great success in films in the, in the States and other countries as well in that. And this film here, BMX Bandits, I remember seeing it in a video store, and it was really, really, it was like one of those films you look at the box, and you're like, you just can't bring yourself to watch. You don't know what to take of it. Is it, is it like going to be a, a a family film, a kid's film or such? But um, it was about a, about a bank robbery. Um, it was a, kind of on a border of action, drama, fun type film little wild, but um, it gained a phenomenal cult following as well. And it was released as shortwave in America. But that was a 1983 Australian adventure crime film. 
and it was BMX Bandits. And I bet you didn't see that one, did you, Lucian? Again, I've heard of it, but I didn't get a chance to see it. That'd probably be another one of those ones that would have played HBO at 3 o'clock in the morning. Exactly, exactly. And when you see, if you saw the box in the video store in passing or saw the poster, it wouldn't have dawned on you on being um, a film that you probably would think, okay, this is another bike movie. Because you know back in the 80s, they had a lot of um, bikes and skateboard films that came out. And um, oh, yeah. you probably look at it as in the same category as one of those films. But it actually gained a really good cult following. And um, I didn't see it personally, um, but I hear about it a lot. And that's just something I want to throw up, being that it was uh, about on the theme of Australian cinema. That was an Australian cinema film that brought in, that had Nicole Kidman in it. And she went on to become a fabulous actress and uh, a lot of great success. Oh, yeah. but, um, and then we stepped into the 90s. And Australian film, we saw a lot of trans, uh, transition. We saw films like Mario's Wedding, The Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, The Castle, Strictly Ballroom. We've seen a lot of great success come out of the 90s. Um, one of them came out. It was in 1982, and it starred um, Russell Crowe, and it was Romper Stomper. Um, I don't know. That game, that gained a little bit of uh, controversy. Uh, multi-winning award film, one of the first major films that starred uh, Russell Crowe. Um, it was like they had the whole neo-Nazi theme element and such. Uh, it was uh, exploits and downfall of a neo-Nazi group in a blue-collar community. Um, but it was uh, a pretty interesting film, and that came out in 1992. And I'm pretty sure you heard of that film as well, Bomper Stomper. Oh, definitely, yeah. And it was the whole neo-Nazi angle that generated the controversy because uh, I think the Australian government was kind of like, uh, oh, no, we don't really have that here. No, no, it's just a movie. And it was a little too too close to home for some people. Yes. And then um, one film came out in 1983 from Australian, well, New Zealand area, and it was um, actually walked away with three Oscars, and five nominations in other categories and such, and that was the piano. And yeah, I, remember I remember seeing, that. yeah, I remember seeing a lot of advertisements on that, and I saw Harvey Cartel, Sam Neill, Holly Hunter, a great cast. Sam Neill was played in a lot of Australian films, a lot of Australian films. He's a, a great Australian actor. Um, Harvey Cartel was excellent in this film, and uh, the film went on. And it won uh, at the Cannes Film Festival. It won three Academy Awards out of eight total nominations in March, and that was 1994. It walked away with Best Actress, Best Supporting Actress, Best Original Screenplay. Um, so the film was a, a great success. And then you had uh, other that one film that we brought up in the title there. It was the 1994 film Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. It became a cult classic. Um, and also went on to do musical productions and such. And it um, had appearances by Guy Pearce and Hugo Weaving. But um, that there was a, had gained a lot of success as well. So the 90s had a, its fair share of great films um, when it came to um, uh, Australian cinema. Um, we had um, another good film that came out was The Castle. Um, the Castle was uh, a 1997 Australian comedy. It was low budget. Um, it received national acclaim, and it starred um, Michael Caton, not Michael Keaton, but Michael Caton, um, Anthony, uh, Stephen Curry, and Sophie Lee. A lot of them were great success and awesome actors and actresses in the Australian area when it came to Australian cinema. So, like I say, like I said in the beginning of the th- this year um, episode, that a lot of uh, actors, actors, directors and so forth, came out and uh, gained uh, great success in other parts of the world as well. And uh, another film, like we talked about John Jarrett and his career with uh, Wolf Creek. John Jarrett went on, and he was starring in a film in 1995 before Wolf Creek time. Um, He starred in a film called All Men Are Liars. 
and that day I saw that film. Um, it was not one that I was quite interested in, but I ended up sitting and watching it anyway. And that, it was an Australian comedy. And that was a, a good film as well. And that um, had David Price and John Jarrett in it. And like I said, John Jarrett, to me, I think he's an awesome actor in all he does. Um, television actor, film actor, and so forth. So another great actor was produced from Australia. And is there any films, uh, do you remember in the 90s of how, but like you said earlier, Australian films in the 90s, they were just like they were in any other period with the uh, home video when it came to the States. They weren't as great a success in the theaters, but except uh, the piano, but other films, they became more of a success in home media. So I think that if it wasn't for home media, we wouldn't have the the great success in the States with all this um, this great cinema from other parts of the country, from other countries out there, from Australia and from England, from all those other countries. So I think um, home video really helped produce that that market for us. Well, oh yeah, I mean it just made it that it, made, it just made it more accessible. I mean, whereas uh, you know your average neighborhood theater might go ahead and play just the most recent Disney flick for you know months at a stretch. You know, uh, you know, and like I said, uh, some of these films you know wouldn't you know would never you know get that kind of exposure, but. Uh, you know, going back to your going back to your memory, you know, the, your local video corner video store having two or three copies of this movie meant that many people actually got to see it, and if they liked it, they told their friends, and uh, you know, a lot of word of mouth. That's usually the best uh, publicity right there. So, and there's one film um, I want to go in. I mentioned it earlier. <clears throat> it was a 1992. Australian romantic comedy called Strictly Ballroom. <clears throat> and the film was directed and co-written by Baz Luhrmann. I'm sorry, I got a little tickle in my throat there. <clears throat> but it went on to get nomination. It was nominated for a Golden Globe. It had 16 wins, 11 further nominations, and it was AFI winner for Best Film. And that was a great film as well. <clears throat> yeah, I've seen so that. Just to take a tiny break, I'm going to go to another trailer for the um, Australian comedy, Crocodile Dundee. He was raised in the land down under, where a man thinks on his feet. Speaks with his fists and lives by his wits. Two beers, all right? One for me, one for me, mate. A legendary figure about to encounter a world more treacherous than any he has ever known. Dave from Australia. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm just going down for a couple of days. Probably see you around. Bye. This is your first trip to New York. First trip anywhere. Well, we might just have to give you one for free. <laughs> yeah. One what? So how are you finding New York? Need a balloon to take us along. That's why I love it, because I fit right in. Good night. Hello. Sorry. Good night. Oh. Oh. My bag! Stop it! Stop it! Oh. When are you coming home, huh? Well, if you can manage, Walt, I'd like to stay a while. Wouldn't have anything to do with a certain lady writer, would it? Paramount Pictures presents... Your house, Senor me. Paul Hogan. Um, hey, my man, what's that? Uh, wait. As Crocodile Dundee. You got a light, buddy? Yeah. And that was Croc, uh, trailer for Crocodile Dundee. We, like we mentioned earlier, it was one of the most successful comedies 
that came out of Australia in 1986, received international acclaim, and was nominated for an Oscar for Best Screenplay. And I'm joined by co-hosts Lucian Toombs as we're continuing on with the talk about Australian cinema. And we were, like I said, we're on the top of the program. We were originally going to be joined by Sean Anthony Robinson, a great Australian actor, up-and-coming actor. And uh, he, because of some technical difficulties, because of the differences of being from uh, a web-based out of the United States and he, him being in Australia, there was a huge time difference there. Um, yesterday was actually Wednesday there. And and there's just uh, also the calling factor. We just couldn't get it patched through correctly. So, but I do want to give him a, a great, um, mention great things about uh, Sean Robinson, a great up and coming actor, actor, director, writer. Um, and he has films coming out from uh, The Forever Fighter, um, Six Feet Down Under, Captain's American Bad, um, Bad Day, um, Devil Women. I mean, he's done a lot of great, great films and a lot of good um, work. Um, he has, under his director credits, That's Not a Knife, uh, Thunder Run, All Tied Up. Um, and he's also a writer, composer, producer. Um, he's a, a phenomenal, phenomenal um, Australian actor. So look him up, uh, Sean Anthony Robinson. If uh, I'm hoping to see him in the States and have his acting career just extend and become a great success because he is extremely talented. And now to get back on uh, the subject of films in Australia, um, we're in the 90s and we're going to be transitioning um, slowly into the the new millennial of 2000. And um, but before we do, I want to talk about a couple of in the 90s how a lot of great actors came out in a lot of these Australian films, like Hugh Jackman in The Paperback Hero in 1998. Um, that became a huge success. Black Rock in 1997 was nominated for five FBI awards, and the movie was the debut of Heath Ledger. And uh, you remember Heath Ledger, a great actor who mm-hmm. passed away in January 2008. Um, his best-known role was as the Joker, and the uh, the Doc Knight, which was a he did a phenomenal job in it, um, in that take of the film. But that was his first film, Black Rock, in 1997, Australian film. Um, also, you had uh, Kiss or Kill, which went on to in 1997 went on to win Best Film in FBI, FI, AFI. If I can say that correctly, there. Um, it's not Francis O'Connor and Matt Day. Um, Dating the Enemy in 1996 had Guy Pearce in it. Um, so a lot of actors and actresses um, went out and they had great success when it came to these films. Another film I want to touch on, actually there's two films I want to touch on from the 90s. One was from 1996, which I know you saw this film. It was uh, If I Winner for Best Film. It's uh, Jeffrey, Buff, uh, um, Jeffrey Rush, who went ahead and won Best Actor Oscar. And that film was called Shine. Have you seen that Actually, one? You got, you got me on that one. Now, I've heard of it, but I haven't seen it. But, yeah, I'm, great, I'm familiar great, with Jeffrey Rush. Yeah, it's a great drama, Australian drama. Um, it was based on the life of the pianist, uh, David Alfred. Um He suffered a mental breakdown and spent years in an institution um, but they did a great job on that film, and it went on to win. It went on to win Best Actor in that film. Um, another film which a lot of uh, people would watch, and they they fell in love with. It was a 1995 Australian American comedy drama. It was directed by Chris Newen and produced by George Miller, and it was called Babe. It went on to win an Oscar for Best Achievement in Visual Effects, and it was nominated for uh, six others. Now, um, the film Babe was, uh, it was all about a pig and a bunch of farm animals. It was just uh, the way it was done. I was a pig raised as livestock um, who wanted to do work as a a sheepdog. But it was a fun film to watch. Um, Have you ever watched that film? I I know you had to, you had to, you, you like those kind of films. I'm pretty sure you had to see it. 
Uh, I've seen parts of it. I haven't, I haven't had the chance to sit down and see it from start to finish, but uh, yeah, I'm very familiar with the film. And again, that's another one of those ones that uh, it wasn't a huge box office success, but it did solid business. It, it, it was actually, um, it, it actually did pretty great in uh, the box office uh, um, area there um, because like, um, it, when it won one awards, it won awards for because it was one of the talking animal visual effects. Um, also, it was had some work done with Rhythm and Hughes Studio and Jim Henson's Creature Shop. And the film went on to not only gain success, um, Miller went on to direct the sequel of Babe Pig in the City. So it had that success to actually gain a sequel, which actually held up to the success of the original. And the original Babe went on with a budget of thirty million. But it had the success of drawing in two hundred and fifty four million so the one I, the one you're thinking of is actually the sequel of Babe, which was Babe Pig in a City, which, like I said, had a lot of following the people loved it just like they loved the original, but Babe's Pig in a City went on to cost ninety million to make, but it only brought in sixty nine million so that was the one you're thinking of, I believe uh, yeah, okay, yeah, that's the one. And it did, it did um, Babe Pig in the City, the sequel, did go on. It was nominated for Best Original Song at the 1988 Academy Awards. Um, and despite its failing to match the predecessor in the success of the first Babe, it did go on and gain um, good critical reception. And people do look at it as being a cult, a cult release, both of them. So once again, that goes to show that's an, another product of Australian filmmaking that that was a success. And now we're going to the um, 2000s. And uh, 2000s brought us uh, a couple of uh, different uh, types of films, more of a drama, a little bit of comedy. Um, we were getting out of the, the modern video era, video stores and such, going into DVD marketing at the time. Um, and we had um, some, one of the successful films was Moulin Rouge, which uh, starred Nicole Kidman. Ellen McGregor, um, and it was directed by Baz Luhrmann. And at the 74th Academy Award, the film was nominated for eight Oscars, including Best Picture, Best Actress, and it was it won two for Best Art Director, Direction, and Best Costume Design. And it went on to have um, some good soundtracks, a lot of good music, and that also became a, had a cult following as well. And um, do you remember the success of the Moulin Rouge ever? Oh, yeah, I've seen that as well. Uh, it's one of those films to where uh, when it starts, I mean, you have, you have John Leguizamo, uh, Hispanic American actor playing uh, Toulouse Lautrec, the French painter, if that tells you anything as to how the movie goes. But uh, it was, uh, it it's a very audacious film. You you know start listening to it and you think, oh, there's no way this is going to work. This is going to be so bad, and it just really knocks your socks off in the fact that uh, it's a classic love story. Uh, I, if you're familiar with the opera Camille, where you have like this beautiful woman, this man falls in love with, it turns out that she's uh, she's actually gravely ill. So, but uh, it, it's one of those films to where uh, it's got the, the music soundtrack is totally uh, anachronistic to the story's setting, but the whole thing works just so damn well. It's just a really, real, tri real great tribute to Baz Luhrmann for being able to pull this off. Huh? And uh, like I said, it's a, we had a lot of award-winning films that came out in 2000s. Um, some of them, a lot of fans probably never even heard of um, because, once again, when it hits the cinema in the States, they don't last as long. And then uh, um, only if you had, like, a huge name actor, director, or whatever pushed into it, then it, it stays in the theater longer. But some of them just come and go. And you had films like Dirty Deeds, which won, had three wins and nine nominations back in 2002. Um, the, the film was directed by David Caesar. And it uh, starred Brian Brown and Tony uh, Collette, which that was a good film. Um, you also had the um, one night, the um, one night the moon, 
It was in 2001. It was an AFI winner, New York uh, International Independent Film and Video F- uh, Festival Award winner, a musical uh, one mu- uh, winner of Screen Music Awards in Australia. It was actually based on the true story of a young a girl who went missing in the Australian outback in 1932. And that was a great film as well. Um, you had, uh, like, like I said earlier, Crocodile Dundee 2 uh, in Los Angeles, and that came out in 2001. Uh, now, and, that, and the 2001 Crocodile Dundee in Los Angeles came out. Uh, Crocodile Dundee 2 came out a little earlier. That was in the late 90s that came out. But um, Crocodile Dundee in Los Angeles in 2001, when that came out, it wasn't uh, as such a, a winner in awards, but it went on to bring, um, once again, the uh, Crocodile Dundee franchise more light because everyone loved the characters and just came on producing. Um, you had On the Beach in 2000, had two AFI nominations, um, Amin Asenti, uh, Rachel Ward, um, Brian Brown, and you had a lot of great actors on that. Uh, the Log Boy in 2000 with Lucy Bell. And these are films that went on to win awards, all brought to you by Australian cinema. So Australian cinema really knew how to to present their films. They really took a lot of um, focus and pride into the product that they were going on and they were creating. Um, one film is an example, starring Sam Worthington and Adam uh, Garcia, and it was a multi-award winning film. It was in 2000 called The Bootman. And it was an Australian comedy and a drama. And that went on to gain success. And I bet you, you haven't heard of that one because once again, it didn't really hit the market in the United States as they had in Australia. So there's a lot of good winning, uh, award winning films that came out in these times. And this is one of the films I think you would know. It was The Master of the Skies in 2002. It's, it was um, actually, it was written by Dana Carvey and Harris Goldberg. It starred Dana Carvey, um, Harold, um, Harold Gould, Jennifer Espostas, Espostato. I'm sorry, I had a little thing there. It was actually produced by Adam Sandler through his Happy Madison Productions. Um, I, I'm pretty yeah. sure you saw that. Never, that was a really fun film. No, I never would have thought that was an Australian film. Nope. But that there is uh, something that they, like I say, it, it was just something that you wouldn't wouldn't expect in 2002. And then you had um, films like Swimming Upstream with Jer- uh, Jeffrey Ruff, Rush and Judy Davis. Uh, that was another good film. Uh, the Hard Word, it won five wins, eight nominations. It was a 2002 Australian crime film. That was a great film that starred Guy Pearce and Rachel Griffiths. So, like I say, the the, the it just went on and on, and the the new as the times changed, more films were produced, more films came out, and and uh, the era of the two thousands brought us some of these good films. Like this is a film that never hit theaters, but had a great cult following when it hit multimedia, when it hit the um home home video and such and DVD. It was Undead. It came out in 2003. It was an Australian zombie science fiction comedy horror. And that was a lot of fun to watch. I don't know if you ever saw that one. Is Was that the one directed by Peter Jackson? No, no. Um, Brain Dead was directed by Peter Jackson. Oh, okay. Um, uh, uh, yeah, Brain Dead was one of the glorious, funnest horror zombie films I ever saw in my life. Totally different film, though, but same premise. The zombies are in this one, too. Um, this one here was directed by Michael and Peter um, Sparig, and it starred Felicity Mattis, uh, Mason and Mungo McKay. That was a really fun film. And another zombies one are like, that... Zombies are like bacon for movies. You know, it's always so much better when you have zombies. Yes, zombies actually... For some reason, um, when you have zombies in a film, uh, especially foreign films, Australian films, uh, films of any sort, um, if you want to get a film to become a cult classic and push a film out there, you put zombies in it. It always works. Yeah. So, but, uh, but like I say, the, 
the premise of uh, Australian and Australian filmmaking and actors and such uh, are just, I mean, there's so much you can go into. Um, like take uh, in 2006, a computer animated musical comedy came out. It was once again directed, produced, and co-written by George Miller. It starred the voices of Elijah Wood, Robin Williams, Brittany Murphy, Hugh Jackson, Nicole Kidman, and so many more. And it was called Happy Feet. And Happy Feet was such a success in the States. It had a budget of $100 million, went on to gross $384 million. And, uh, I mean, that sport is one, I don't know how many sequels, um, had huge reviews, won an Academy Award for Best Animated Feature, a first for the Warner Brothers, as well as the BAFTA Award for Best Animated Film. It was nominated for Annie Award for Best Animated Feature and a Saturn Award for Best Animated Feature. And um, it had a sequel of Happy Feet 2. And I believe it had, since the time, I, I don't know if it came out in another sequel, but it had a lot of everywhere back in the day in 2006. So have you familiar with that one yet? Happy Feet? Oh, oh the yeah. Little, little yeah. Penguins? Not, not, and, not uh, just penguins, but dancing penguins. Uh, dancing penguins, yes. And one of my favorite. Uh, how, how do you like? You like um, like uh, large crocodile films, don't you? Like uh, Lake Placid, um, Alligator. You like those kind of films, don't you? Those good monster flicks with uh, humongous oh, yeah, crocodiles love, involved. Yeah, I love the uh, giant in two thousand. In two thousand seven, an Australian independent horror film came out. Michael Vaughn. Sam Worthington, and also John Jarrett, and it was called Rogue. And I watched this film, and believe me, the special effects in it were amazing. It was a, it was a good, had a good tension build in a film. It had that feel of watching a really um, old school um, alligator film, like the original Alligator that came out in the 80s. It received not that great of a reception, but it went on to become a cult classic. In fact, uh, the budget of the film was $25 million and only grossed $4 million, so it lost a lot of money. But it was a really good film. Um, and I think a lot of the push of becoming a cult classic was because of DVD sales and such, because no one ever knew what the film was about. They didn't really have a, much, a huge marketing campaign behind this film. But it was really good. And, and I advise um, those listening to check it out. It's called Rogue. It's a 2007 Australian independent horror film. It's about a gigantic saltwater crocodile. <clears throat> and um, it, it, was, it was a really good film. Yeah, I'm going to have to check that out. And uh, another film that came out in 2007 was a horror thriller. It was uh, actually set in the mangrove swamps of northern Australia. It was called Blackwater. And um, it was a really fun film to watch. There's a true story of a crocodile attack in Australia, um, in Australia's Northern Territory in December of 2003. Um, and they went ahead and they made the film. It's called Blackwater back in 2007. Um, it went on to, uh, didn't lose m- much money, but the budget of the film was at 700000 And it went on to only grow 637000 plus. So you lost some money on it, but it also was a really good film. And it has a, a good cult following behind it. So that's something that you want to check out too if you like those giant crocodile monster like films. <clears throat> so um, we have, uh, like I said, we're closing in. And I know, Lucian, you said you can stay to like around 10 30 ish in that. So uh, I'll give you a little before uh, then. Yeah, I'm going to have to leave a tiny little bit before that, actually. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Like I say, um, we're we'll talking about Amer- um, Australian cinema tonight. And um, before I let Lucian go, I want to go ahead and once again um, pay respects to uh, the, the guest we should have had on the show today, uh, Sean A. Robinson, a uh, great Australian actor. And I'm hoping that we'll get him um, into uh, one of our shows. We have multiple shows coming out soon. Um, as you've seen, I advertised yesterday. That with the success of KNS Society Talk Live, we'll also be doing something called KNS Live, 
which would be a Facebook Live feature once a week, and it'll be all done through Facebook Live and where I um, interact with uh, guests. So hopefully we get Shawnee Robinson on that pro, um, program, and we can go on with that. But we have, uh, he'll be, like I said, he's a great actor, and um, I wish he was on the show today, but audios came about, and we couldn't make that happen. But um, next week, we're going to be joined by Chris Moore, who is a great independent horror director and a really, really fun guy um, and just awesome talent. He has an awesome talent all around. Um, He's in the books and making other films as well. Um, He made a film called Blessed Are the Children, and he'll be joining us next week as a special guest. And here's a trailer to his film. I warned you, didn't I? At least you noticed it, and you got out. She didn't see you then. No. They were just standing there, the masks and the signs. They've always had those. They're just crazy. Don't worry about it, okay? Seems like they were staring straight into my soul. That was a film, Blessed Are the Children, directed by Chris Moore, who will be joining us next week as a special guest. And so, um, Lucian, like I say, um, it's always a pleasure having you on the year. Um, next week, we, um, we'll be having you join us as well. And also, we'll be joined by Patrick Arden, who will be who is a, uh, another original co-host. And uh, we also are going to be having a lot of new other co-hosts coming on as well, because uh, with KNS Ooh. Society Talk Live expanding, there's going to be a lot of different shows we'll be doing as well. So we'll have some alterations of hosts. So that should be a fun thing. Um, but Lucian, i uh, see you next week. And love having you on the year. Such a great friend. Awesome talent. And I hope you enjoyed the show today so far. I always enjoy the show, and it's always an honor to be here. Well, you have a great night, um, and give my best to the, the wife, and you have, and I'll see you next week. Well, I won't see you, but I'll be talking right, to you take, next week. Take it easy, my friends. Good evening. <clears throat> and as we continue on with the talk of Australian cinema, um, I'm going to play this quick um, clip for it's a Sean um, Robinson, Anthony Robinson clip to his uh, show reel of some of the films he did. And he's a great dramatic actor. He can play comedic roles, dramatic roles. Um, he can really get in there, and, and he's not afraid to take on any role. And this is a show reel from his work. I'm not your fucking mate. Really? No hey, boss. I reckon we can cut this big one down really. Ah! Fucking lying, bitch. Please, just calm down, mate. Look, we're all just trying to do our job, okay? I'll oh, fucking do it. Oh, hey, no. Yes. Well, I'm coming for you next, you little fucking maggot. I'm going to watch you, man. Can I help you? Um, uh, Natalie left her hat in my car. My sister's been dead for 10 years. You see, some drunk idiot hit her and killed her. Uh, uh, Natalie's your... Yes, uh... me, sister. So how about you get back in the car and piss off? You've been gone for 10 years! Yeah, but 
I never miss this sign. The big pig? Really? Hey. Layla! You come back for me. In your dreams, honey. Best part of my night, Billy. Hey, T. Big as a shit. We tear fucking holes in them. Fucking hell! <laughs> Ah, we're gonna see the bloody car. You are? Yeah, man, see oh, that's awesome! Can I kiss you? No, no. <laughs> man, I can Fair white bear can't jump. She's a fucking dish tray. The fucking dish tray. She's bleeding. Look, you can't come in with that box, eh? Please? Yeah, sorry, you can't come in with that box. Look, I just need a pen. Yeah, sorry. This is bullshit. I just need a pee. What is wrong with you people? And that was the show reel of uh, great Australian actor Sean Anthony Robinson. And like I say, uh, any of directors or writers out there that are making any films in the States or anywhere around at all throughout the world, look, this is a, a great actor from Australia. Um, Sean Anthony Robinson is a great up-and-coming actor. You can check out his IMD page. Um, director, writer, producer. Um, he does a lot of work in film. Um, a really great up-and-coming actor. Now to get back on the, the subject, we were talking about the uh, 2000s when um, the new millennia came out with uh, Australian film. Um, we had another Australian film that came out with Nicole Kidman and Hugh Jackman in 2008, and that was Australia. Um, that went on to um, get not that much success as they were hoping to get, um, but it did carry on some, it did make a, a good profit to be called, um, a, a, I want to say a, a good film, because it was a good film, but it gave that profit to actually show a success rate. Um, the budget was $130 million and it went on to claim $211 million. And that starred, uh, like I said, it's put a hand starred Nicole Kidman and Hugh Jackman. And it was a 2008 romantic historical drama, and it was directed by Baz Luhrmann, and it was Australia. And I'm sure a lot of listeners have seen that film. Another film that came out, it was nominated for Best Film in 2009 um, at the Kodak Inside Film Awards in Sydney was Cedar Boys. Um, and Cedar Boys was starring Les Chan- um, Channery, Buddy Donan, and Wada Savi. And it was um, an Australian film about the life of a Middle Eastern young adults, a group of adults from the Western Sydney, Australia area. And it had um, a good success rate. But like I say, it became a cult classic, cult following when it hit the States through social media and DVD releases and such. <clears throat> now, as we head into further down, and we come into 2010 onto the, the next decade of the era. Um, we came into other films such as uh, the, um, Eye of the Storm, which came out in 2011. And uh, Eye of the Storm was uh, didn't get the success rate as uh, many wanted to see. Um, it was uh, kind of a, a slow burn, but it was actually a, it was it was pretty interesting. And I don't think they really pushed the marketing campaign on that as much. Um, and there was uh, another film that came out. It was called Uninhabited in 2010. It's a horror film directed by, by Bill Bennett. And that went on to be, uh, gather a cult, um, cult following. And then there was a film called Daybreakers. Daybreakers starred Ethan Hawke, Sam Neill, William Defoe. And uh, that film went on to uh, get a success rate. Um, it and a $51.4 million box office draw. Um, and it was about vampires. And it had, a, had an interesting twist to the whole, um, the whole principle of vampirism. And it gained a cult, um, cult following in the States here. And it premiered at the Toronto International Film Festival. And that was back in um, 2010. So, like I say, that, that was one of the great films that came out in that era. Uh, Sanctum was another good film in 2011, came out. It was a 3D disaster survival film. 
It was directed by Alistair Garrison, and it was written by John Gavin and Andrew White. And it starred Richard Roxburgh, Rise Wakefield, Alice Parkinson, and had a. It was a. It was one of the most successful Australian films at the box office through that time period. Um, Thirty million dollars was the budget, but it went on to gross one hundred and eight million dollars, which uh, I think it was a lot, lot of fun to watch, especially in three D. If you watch three uh, D films, that was a lot of fun to watch. Um, and then another film that came out was since we were in the three D, the three D era through two thousand and ten. Um, Bait came out, and that was a horror disaster film as well. And um, Bait was about sharks. It was an Australian film. Um, it was directed by Kimball Vendo, and it was it, start, it featured um, Sherry Vincent, um, Phoebe Tonkin, Xavier Samuel, Julian McMahon, and it was a, a very fun film to watch. Like I said, the 3D effects really made the film, especially those underwater scenes. And, I mean, who doesn't like sharks and shark attack films? And then uh, we also spawned a sequel to one of the great Australian films in 2013, Wolf Creek 2 came out. Um, it was, uh, once again, John Jerry Price's role as the... That's there I recommend you seeing. Like I say, Wolf Creek, um, the first one was really good based on a true story or inspired by a true story. Um, it was a good serial killer film. A Wolf Creek 2 was awesome. They upped the gore in Wolf Creek gore effects and also spawned two seasons so far of the Wolf Creek series, all starring um, John Jarrett playing as the role of Nick Taylor. And it's his his character... Um, as Mick Taylor is just it's just awesome. He's just an awesome actor. I recommend you watching the Wolf Creek series. If you're a horror fan, you'll love it. And um, so horror films really, th- there was a lot of them that came out in the in 2010 on, um, especially from Australia. You had um, another one that a lot of people never really get a chance to see. Uh, was The Dressmaker in 2015. It was a revenge comedy. Uh, it was a, also a mixture of a drama directed by um, Jacqueline Morehouse. It was based on a 2000 um, novel of the same name, and it starred Kate Winslet, and um, it was a, that was a really fun film to watch as well. A little slow burn, but it was a, a good film to watch. And um, one film that went on to win six Academy Awards, the most ever for an Australian film in 2015 was once again bringing back Mad Max with Mad Max Fury Road. And it was directed by George Miller, uh, one of who directed the whole Mad Max series. <clears throat> but this one here starred Tom Hardy, Charlie Theron, and it, it had a lot of supporting actors, had a great soundtrack, great visuals, and, I mean, it just was an awesome film. I got a chance to see that in the theater, and I loved every minute of it. Um, I mean, it went on, like I say, it received 10 Academy Award nominations, including Best and Best Director. It walked away with six awards, Costume Design, Production Design, Make. is outstanding for an achievement from an Australian film. And it goes to show in the 70s with Mad Max being a breakthrough in Australian cinema. And in 2015, to see the success of Mad Max still stand strong, becoming the most that uh, award-winning Australian film with uh, Mad Max Fury Road, which was an awesome film. So, um, like I say, there was a, there's so many films that I left out tonight. Um, another film was Breathed. It premiered in the 2017 Toronto International Film Festival um, and was released in June of 2018. 
And that was, uh, like I said, the cast was Simon Bob Baker, Elizabeth DeBakey. And uh, the film is set in the 1970s. And it was a good film as well. So Australia just keeps on producing and bringing out um, such good, good films. And uh, I want to go ahead and I want to also bring up uh, a film that was also a 2014 Australian film. It was a supernatural psychological horror drama that gained so much, so much following, becoming a cult classic in that. It was The Batter Duck. Um, the Batter Duck was really um, in a homage to films that we see, uh, like Coretta, Tavi, and such. It was really a slow burn film. Didn't really gain so much at the box office. The budget wasn't really high. This budget was at $2 million, only gained $7.5 million. But the cult following and the reviews were really positive. And a lot of people loved the film. And um, it had a strong reception, especially at the 2014 Sundance Film Festival. And uh, to this day, a lot of people still talk about it. And like I say, it had a lot of great success. And it came right from uh, Australia. Australia is going to, like I say, keep on surprising us with great roles, great films, great directors, great actors. And uh, it's just uh, they're a huge, huge part of cinema. And uh, I mean, I can't say enough great things about them. So I encourage a lot of you to get out there and um, watch some independent films, watch some good uh, um, films out there from Australia, uh, catch up on some old films from Australia, because you'll really be pleased with the work that they do. Uh, Great directors, great actors, um, so much talent, and uh, they're part of our cinema heritage. And um, like I say, just get out there and check them out. Um, you can find a lot of the films on Amazon Primes or Netflix or Hulu or uh, independent. If you're independent, independent films, your conventions. Um, so always support your independent, independent filmmakers and get out there to conventions. Meet some of these casts if you get a chance that from from these Australian films. Um, because I encourage the these films to keep on coming because they're just they're brilliant. And I want to play a quick tri- um, clip from a film that I mentioned earlier. Alone on a sea of endless calm, it was easy to imagine they were the only two people on Earth. But into their perfect world, there came a stranger. Stand up! <laughs> Tried to take her across the Pacific. On your own? No. There were six of us. The others died ten days ago. I'm going on board her. Can't do that. He's fast asleep. He won't even know. God, you're pretty. What about those people, huh? There wasn't any food poisoning, was there? You think I'm making this up? No, I don't. You sound so much like that, Ray. It's scary. Dead calm. A voyage into fear. (laughs) From the makers of The Road Warrior and Mad Max. And I want to thank you all for tuning in. And once again, this is uh, this episode's about the uh, cinema of Australia. Um, I also want to bring forth a lot of uh, great guests that are be coming about with KNS Society Talk Live. Next week, we'll be joined by Chris Moore, um, director of Blessed Are the Children, a great director, really talented um, in all he does. Uh, February 6th will be Ralph Kaninsky. He brought us There's Nothing Out There. Um, Party Bus to Hell and a lot of other great films. Great director. Um, he'll be joining us on February 13th. Chris Greenway will be joining us. Um, he is uh, brought his um, Hot, Pod, Hot Tub Party Mass- Massacre and Midnight Owl TV. Uh, great guy. A lot of fun. 
<clears throat> we'll be joined on February 20th by a, a great actor played in so many great films. Caleb Thomas will be joining us. On February 27th, we'll be joined by a great host, hostess, um, awesome entertainer, a very brilliant Bunny Galore will be joining us. On March 6th, we'll be joined by Eamon Hardiman, who brought us the giant pig wearing, pig, uh, pig head wearing mask of um, Pork Chop, a good horror film. You have to watch a great independent horror film. Um, he'll be joining us as well. On March 13th, all you wrestling fans will be excited. We'll be joined by Impact Champion Congo Kong. Um, from Impact Wrestling. He'll be joining us on March 13th. And on March 20th, we're going to pay respect uh, to a great woman um, who did so much in the world of professional wrestling back in the 80s um, with the wonderful presentation, the wonderful show of Glow, Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling. Um, as you, as a lot of you know, Glow is also a success on Netflix with the Glow TV series. But this is, um, I'm talking about the, the one and only Matilda the Hun. Um, we'll be having a, a tribute show for her, which all the great work she done in GLOW back in the 80s. Um, we'll be joined on that show by some great GLOW girls, Roxy Astor, Patricia Summerlin, um, Debbie Miller, and TV GLOW. will be joined by a lot of great um, legends, GLOW girls on that show, and I'm really looking forward to it. So we have a, a lot of episodes lined up, a lot of great um, guests to be on board. We're also going to have um, so many great other shows coming about. Um, like I say, we have KNS Live, which is going to be all ba- based on Facebook Live, in which you can tune in on Facebook and watch uh, myself as I interview some of the, the guests and celebrities. Um, it's going to be an, uh, um, half an hour to an hour long show. It will vary at times. So I'm looking forward to bringing that in. Um, we we'll also have some new co-hosts coming on board for KNS Society Talk Live. Um, and so I'm looking forward to having a, a lot of new voices on the year and can interact and have some fun. Um, but like I said, this show, at the last minute, we had a change to be Australian cinema as a topic. We were scheduled to have uh, Sean Anthony Robinson, Australian actor, as a special guest. But um, because of some um, audios that came up between uh, the, the time differences, callings, and so forth. It was going to be hard to set up, and we tried, but we couldn't have no success on that. So hopefully we'll have Sean Anthony Robinson join on with the uh, Facebook Live um, chat as being one of the guests. So, But he's an awesome actor, and, and I can't say enough great things about him. Uh, but, yeah, today we discussed uh, cinema in Australia. Um, and a lot of great films they brought us, a lot of great films they continue to bring us. A lot of them are award winners, a lot of actors, directors, um, cinematographers, writers um, that came from Australia, brought us many great films in the States and other parts of the world. So Australia was a great um, center of filmmaking, dating back to the early 1900s and before then, um, and they continue on bigger those great films. So I want to thank you for tuning in to uh, KNS Society Talk Live. And once again, our uh, success is really high. A lot of great listeners tuned in tonight. Thank you all from all over. We had um, Russia, we have Canada, we have Brazil, we have Australia, we have China, we have Japan. Um, we have, I mean, there's so many great listeners and thank you all for tuning in each and every week and we continue to gain more listeners, which is great. We have a new Facebook page up where we go to all the archived KNS Society Talk Live shows. Um, also leave your messages and comments and things you would like to see. We have, uh, a lot of great things coming about with KNS Society. I'm really happy with, um, we also have a film coming out, um, it's called Eddie. Um, it stars Patrick and Brower, Brianna White, um, Miriam Van Wy, uh, Patrick McDevitt, um, Pierre Carina, Ian Axum, um, Mary J. Lagan. I mean, there's a lot of uh, good, um, good people I had a chance to work with on that film, and that'll be coming out uh, in the next month where you can watch it. Uh, also, uh, Creepy World of Strange, which is a horror anthology starring these people. 
So we're look, I'm looking forward to that coming out from KNS Society Entertainment. And as always, thank you for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy the evening.